Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw custom letters in Adobe Illustrator. So I've created a new document in Illustrator, 900 pixels wide and 900 pixels high. And I'm going to start by zooming in and selecting the line tool. So I'm going to left click and hold shift to draw a perfectly vertical line. And let's go and adjust the weight. So we'll just thicken this up a little bit. It doesn't matter what weight you choose because we will be able to adjust that later in the video. And let's go to our stroke by selecting this over here on the left. And in the swatches panel, just pick any color. So it doesn't matter for now. I'm going to double click the magenta swatch. Make sure you select the global button. This is quite important because it will allow us to instantly change the color once we've drawn our letters. So let's select that. You can give it a name if you like and select OK. So we have our pink line and we have our global swatch created. So now we're going to create some more pieces. We have a line and we can select the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw a circle. And what we can do is use the direct selection tool to just drag over this bottom anchor point here so it's selected and then hit delete or backspace. So now we have a semicircle and we can move this to one side. Hold alt and drag to create a copy and again select the direct selection tool and drag over one of these anchor points and hit delete or backspace. So now we have a quarter. So we've got lots of pieces that we can now use to start creating our letters. In fact, we can also drag and hold Alt with our vertical line and then hold Shift and rotate so that it's perfectly horizontal. So the word that we're going to be writing is mint, that's M-I-N-T. So think of these shapes that we've got on the side now as assets that we can reuse. So we'll keep these here on the side and as we create our letters we'll just drag holding the alt key to create a copy but we'll always keep these on the outside of the artboard so the first letter is M so I'm just going to drag in these pieces and we can also hold alt and shift and drag this out and then I can just select both these parts here so at the moment I've just got the semicircle at the top and the line on the right so we'll hold Alt and Shift and we'll drag that out until it snaps in place. So Smart Guides will really come in handy here. So if you haven't got those turned on, you can go to View and down to Smart Guides. Just make sure they're checked. So we've created the letter M. And what we can do is we can select all of these shapes, hold Shift and scale down. And it will remember that same 20 point stroke weight. So you can also go into Outline Mode. That's Command or Control Y and we can just check that all our lines do line up perfectly. So we'll be doing this again later in the video as well. So we've created our letter M. Now we can hold Alt and Shift, drag out. We've instantly got an I. And we can then use the direct selection tool to just drag over this top anchor point. And then you can use either the arrow keys on your keyboard or you can just drag up holding Shift to keep it perfectly straight and we then have the main part of our letter I. I might just bring that down a little bit. What we can also do is we can draw a circle. However, as we've already got this line created with the correct width, if we hold Alt and Shift and drag this up, we're going to be doing a lot of Alt and Shift dragging. <laughs> so let's just drag this top anchor point down and so it sits exactly on the bottom one. And of course the shape will disappear because they are on top of each other so there's no stroke to create. However, however, if we move this up a little bit and go into the stroke panel, currently the cap is square. So we can round this off and it will look something like this. And the trick is if you round this off on a stroke that is zero pixels wide and high, it will round off both edges and create a circle. And the good thing about doing it this way is that we have that flexibility to increase the weight of the stroke and it will also adjust this. So if we created the circle as an ellipse with a fill, we would have to manually adjust the width as we adjust the width of the letters. 
So when we get to the end of the design and we want to adjust the width of all letters, including the dot on the IM1 Go, we can do that instantly. Okay, so we've got our I. Now the N is going to be quite easy. We just have to drag and then hold shift and just select this middle part of the N or the M rather, M, N, and then drag this out holding Alt and Shift and we've got the N. And for the T, we can drag this out holding Alt and Shift and then use the direct selection tool to drag up that top anchor point. And now we're going to pull one from our little toolbox on the left. We can just hold Alt and Shift and drag in that horizontal line and we're going to use this for part of the T. So you could have this sticking out on the left but I think for this tutorial we're going to have it just coming out of the right hand side. And again with the direct selection tool we're just going to pull that in. Now you could have the T looking like this straight down to the bottom. I think what I'm going to do is again just dip into that toolbox. We're going to grab the quarter this time and we'll hold shift as we rotate it. And that's a little too big I think so let's just hold shift again and as we scale this down holding shift will keep that proportional and won't distort it in any way. And we can use the direct selection tool just to move this up. And we can just slide this in at the bottom. Now sometimes where horizontal or curved lines are working with vertical lines as well, they won't always snap to line up because the stroke is currently aligned to the center. So you can see here that lining these up in outline mode will cause the bottom of the T to dip below. But that's okay, just zoom in really, 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 really close. Line them up and then hold shift to move it straight across to the right. And then these two vertical endpoints will match up. And we know that the bottom of the T is in exactly the right place and lines up with the bottom of the N and the other letters. So all we need to do is we can do this like this or we can go into outline mode. Remember that's command or control Y. And we just need to drag that other part of the T down to meet the bottom part of the T. And something else we can also do is this part of the T is extending out quite a lot. So let's just hold Alt and Shift, drag down. That will create a copy. And then using the direct selection tool, we're just going to bring this in from the left. Let's just find that anchor point and zoom in nice and close and just connect these points up. Again, very helpful having the smart guides turned on because it just snaps everything in place. Now something else we're going to do is just look at the spacing between our letters. Uh, so let's just create a square and we'll give this a random color. And we'll just position these between letters. So kerning letters correctly is quite in depth, but because a lot of our letters are fairly similar, we've got N's and N's and we've got I's and T's, so lots of vertical lines within our letters, we can do this quite simply like so. So just making sure that they are spaced correctly apart. And the more you do with lettering, the more you will learn about kerning and you'll be able to tell if something looks right or if it looks a bit off just by eye. It's just something that really you can develop with experience. Uh, okay, so let's just move this to the right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we are zooming in probably a thousand million billion percent. So if we're accurate a thousand million billion percent, when you zoom back out to 100%, it's, it's going to look pretty close. Okay, let's just pull this up. Just so we can make sure this lines up for our T. And I'm just going to move this very slightly to the left, making sure that I'm holding shift to keep it horizontal, because if I don't hold shift, the T could move up or down and would then be out of line with the letters. And seeing as we've put a lot of work into making sure all the letters line up, that would be a tragedy. Okay, so we have our letters. You can adjust the spacing as you like. 
I'm just going to bring the eye down a little bit. So let's line up the eye here, the dot of the eye with the T. So if we select our anchor point here, remember this is a single anchor point. And we select that part of the T. And we can just align to the bottom. And what it will do is it will bring the dot that is higher up down in line with the T. So it will do this. And then we can use the direct selection tool just to bring that eye back up. And you can adjust this until you're happy. Once you're happy with what you've created, I'm actually just going to move the eye just up a little bit. Sometimes you'll line shapes and letters up and there's something that just won't look right and it will take a lot of fiddling around and tinkering just to get it to a point where you're happy. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to settle on that one now. We've got our design. I'm just going to move all of these shape pieces out of the way. Now at the moment, these are all strokes. They're all still editable. I'm just going to hold Alt and Shift and create a copy of this and just put this outside of the artboard. So this is essentially a backup in case anything goes wrong or I would like to adjust something later. So we have our mint lettering. Now this is the trick. The reason that we created that global swatch at the beginning is because it allows us to double click that swatch. And as we adjust the global swatch, with the preview box selected, it will adjust the color of our lettering. So we don't need to manually go through and select every shape and then recolor it manually. So we can give this a color. Looks good to me. And then once you're happy, you can also create a few copies of this and we can start to explore a few more variations. So let's make the top one have a thinner stroke weight. So we can bring this down to 10 or even eight. Let's go a little bit thinner. Now you'll see some of these letters now won't line up. So sometimes it's just a case of going in and adjusting these shapes. So just selecting the relevant anchor points and nudging them down. Something I like to do as well, you see the bottom of the T here? I would want to line this up again with the bottom of the N. With those bottom anchor points selected, I could hold shift and use the left arrow key to move this to the left. And what this does is totally distort the letter T. However, I can drag this down holding shift using the direct selection tool. And once that's lined up and I'm happy, I simply hold shift again and use the right arrow key and it will put the T back in place. So that's quite a handy way of doing it if you're using the arrow keys. And then again we can bring these letters closer together if we like. Just by holding shift and using the arrow keys or you can drag with the mouse, it's entirely up to you. So we've got one variation and then let's do another one that is super, super thick. So let's try 30 points. There we go. And we're also going to round the cap off at the end. So again, we might need to adjust a few things. Let's just drag these anchor points around using the direct selection tool. And we can again adjust the T and move that over. That looks pretty good to me. And then push that back in place with the arrow keys. And the dot of the eye, let's move that up. And I think for this one, I'm going to make the dot of the eye ever so slightly bigger, just so it comes ever so slightly outside the width of the main part of the letter I. And then move that down. This is the part that can take a long time, just adjusting and fine tuning those details. And I always find it's a very good way of doing it to create lots of versions like this, even if they're very similar. Just create multiple versions, tweak them, and then you can look at them and go, okay, which one do I like? And then you can take that forward and then go through that same process, creating
create copies, tweak them, and then find the one that you think is most effective. And then keep doing that until you get a finished design. So we're just going to space these letters apart. And there we go, we've got three designs to choose from. I think for this tutorial, I'm going to go with the bottom one. So again, I'm just going to put these ones out to the side of the artboard. I'm going to keep them just in case I want to go back or use them as a reference point or something. And we've lost part of the T there. There we go. So we have our lettering. In fact, I'm going to create a copy of this and pop that out on the side as well, because what we're going to do next is finalize our shape. So at the moment, this is all still an editable stroke. And if we select everything, when we're happy, go to object, down to expand, and leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. Now these lines are no longer recognized by Illustrator as strokes, so we can adjust the width, but it is a little bit more complicated. And we're just going to select each letter individually. And in the Pathfinder panel on the right, if you don't have that, go to Window and down to Pathfinder and select the top left option, which is Unite. And it will combine all these individual elements of the letter M into one complete shape. And we can do the same for the other letters. And this is a really good way to just finish up and polish off a design that you've created. So it just means that we can't accidentally drag out these different shapes and pull the letters apart by mistake. So we can just turn all these parts of the T into one complete shape. And then once you're happy, you can either do the same again for the whole composition, or you can simply keep these letters separate and just go to object and group. So you can easily group and ungroup them if you'd like to move them around. And last of all, I'm just going to select a line to artboard and align this both horizontally and vertically in the middle of the artboard. And there we go, that's how to draw custom letters in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.